Hi there, my name is Vadim Pavlov. I am a senior technical marketing engineer and today I am going to show you an integration with Rapid7 Nextpulse. The integration is based on updated in NAS 8.1 outbound API feature. A JSON template is a core part of the integrated solution and it defines how to process events and which API calls to make. Asset management and automated security issues remediations are the base use cases for integration with vulnerability management solutions. So, let me show how the integration was configured. The security ecosystem license is required. RPZ and threat analytics licenses are optional until you don't need to implement the security issues remediation use case. For the integration, we should import templates, create an endpoint and notification. As I mentioned already, JSON templates define how to interact with a remote endpoint. Login and logout templates are required for Rapid7 Expose integration. The Rapid7 endpoint configuration is straightforward. You need to define URI, user credentials and a session template. A notification is basically a link between an event and a template. In these notifications, you can filter events and specify a template to execute. RPZ events also can be deduplicated in order to avoid unnecessary template execution if multiple events were triggered simultaneously. Sample templates use several extensible attributes to adjust their behavior. The commentary fields contain explicit description. Also, for demo purposes, a few networks were already provisioned. Rapid7 Expose does not require extra configuration. Only sites and a user should be already created. Our next topic is asset management. We can synchronize IPv4, IPv6, networks, ranges, hosts, fixed IP addresses, reservations and leases. The synchronization is triggered when we add, edit or delete an object. The sample asset management template supports only insert and delete actions. We are going to add IPv4 network to the Nexpose Lab 2 site. Some attributes were inherited from the network view. After a few seconds, you can see that site ID and synced add attributes were updated. This means that the template was successfully executed and the network was added to the Lab2 site. I will show it later. Right now, I am going to add two reservations and a host. We will not request Rapid7 Expose to scan reservation, and because of the attribute inheritance, the objects will be added to the Expose Lab site. The host is enabled in DNS, so we will add it using its host name and scan it immediately with default scan parameters. And the last object I want to create is IPv6 reservation. Let's check what was provisioned on Rapid7 Nexpose site. As you can remember, we added 10.60.24.0 slash 30 network and IPv6 address to the Lab2 site. Nexpose doesn't support seed annotation, so the network was expanded to a range from .0 to .3. We added a host to the Lab site and requested to perform a scan, so you can see the scan status is in progress. The host was added by a host name and two reservations were automatically collapsed into a range by Nexpose. The host is still scanning, so it was not added into the assets yet. While the host is scanning, we will delete created objects in the Lab2 site.
As you can see, the network and IPv6 address were successfully removed from the site. Let's check the lab site configuration. The host was added in assets by 10.60.25.118 IP address. Right now, I'm going to delete 121 reservation and the host. On Rapid7 site, 121 reservation was removed from the range and the host was removed from the defined assets by the host name and from the assets by the IP address. Previously, you saw that a scan can be immediately initiated after we created an object in IPM database. Outbound API feature also allows automatically request an asset scan if a security issue was detected by an Infoblox appliance. We will run our tests from already provisioned asset. You can see that the last time it was scanned on March 10th. We will use DIG to emulate a malicious request. The request was blocked by RP0. The outbound API template initiated a scan and updated the extensible attribute. This attribute is used by the template as an additional deduplication mechanism and prevents scanning an asset multiple times a day. I should remove the value of the attribute in order to demonstrate you the DNS data exfiltration detection event. I will use data exfiltration demo portal for that purpose and execute a simple script which will transfer a syslog file via DNS. A DNS request were redirected to freew.infoblox.com. This means that DNS data exfiltration was detected and blocked. Last scan attribute was updated and the scan is already running. That's all for today. If you have any questions, please join Rapid7 Group on our community website or contact your Infoblox representative.